we'll pivot now to our final review pivot. of the evening. Pivot. pivot. And uh, that is of, pardon me. Uh, oh, hang on. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm stuffing up the, here it is. Death at a Funeral. Um, this is a British comedy released in 2007. I head on over to the IMD, IMDB, pardon me, synopsis where it tells me it's a, a runtime of 90 minutes. And the synopsis goes, Chaos ensues when a man tries to expose a dark secret regarding a recently deceased patriarch of a dysfunctional British family. Uh, the film was uh, released in 2007, like I said, directed by Frank Oz, who has uh, done uh, quite a few things. Uh, I might say he's been an actor as well, not just a director, but he directed uh, Bowfinger, um, Death at a Funeral, and um, a couple of other smaller films. Um, he's also an actor in uh, The Muppets also. So he plays... Um, a bunch of different characters, including Fozzie Bear. Um, oh, and Miss Biggie for, for some instances as well. Interesting. Um, anyway, this one uh, stars uh, Matthew McFadden, Peter Dinklage, Ewan Bremner, who we know from Train Spotting. We also have Keely Hawes, Andy Nyman, Daisy Donovan, Alan Tudyk, who we all know and love, Jane Asher, Chris Marshall, and Rupert Graves. The IMDb rating sits at 7.4, a meta score of 67, and Rotten Tomatoes, gentlemen, take a stab. 73. 80. 50. 62. Not Ooh. certified fresh, but still fresh. Um Damn. Anyway, uh, apparently rather su successful. It spawned an American ripoff um, three years later in 2010, uh, which has an all-star cast as well. Um, but anyway, this one currently on stand, so you go and watch it yourself. Uh, hands up who saw it. I can't remember at this point. You finished re-watching it just before the show. Myself if I hold my hand up all the way at the back, does that signify that I've seen it a long time ago? Yes, it does. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Um, <laughs> And we'll yet to see this one, that's okay. Uh, I'll go to the dulcet tones then of Terry Fear for his thoughts on death at this funeral. I saw this once upon a time and remember getting super furious um, uh, and, and frustrated um, by certain characters in the film. And uh, when you said you were re-watching it and we we're going to review it, I was like, I really want to talk about um the f word but i don't particularly want to re-watch death of a funeral but i feel like if i'm going to talk about it i need to re-watch it so i did and i ended up having to skip like use the 10 second forward time skip button a lot to, wow. to get through the film i love aspects of the film really really brilliantly funny for the vast majority of the film but british comedy sometimes has this uh uh, it, they're like really 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 annoying characters you've got like really frustrating characters and so the one that I'm thinking of is the friend of the family the guy who is driving the skinny beanpole guy um, with the, the, the short black hair um, to, to the, to the uh, funeral and he gets ta tasked with also picking up I think it's Uncle Arthur Alfie um, Alfie, Uncle Alfie, um, uh, as well, who's a cantankerous um, old man. Uh, and he's just, he's infuriating. I hate him so, so much. I can't, I just can't stand the character. Like, he's so socially inept, so socially unaware. It's like there's definitely something not right in his mind for the things that come out of his mouth. And like, the, 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 like he's affronted he's he's outraged to the point of basically talking through a minister's sermon as he's presiding over a funeral there's a coffin with a dead body in it three feet from this motherfucker and he's like i can't believe you took my parking spot i had uncle alfie in the back of the car and i would be frustrated i'd be pretty ticked off if i had to lug that old guy as cantankerous as he was uphill in a wheelchair i think he's rightfully frustrated but you don't interrupt a funeral to bitch at someone that they took a parking space from you like you just don't that's not like no that's really really dumb and like he just cold walks up to a doctor who happens to be at the funeral is like asking for medical advice and i'm like you you haven't got a booked appointment with this doctor like and he's the brother of the guy who died like what the hell is wrong with you you don't do that 
but he did and I'm just like every scene that he's in I'm just like I want to punch him in the face I just want to punch him in the face I really want to punch him in the face I'm glad that he ends up with an old man's poop in his mouth uh, because like it's it's just it's ridiculous I I really really dislike the character and I also dislike the dude that he brought with him the guy that's like also socially unaware he's like got this this obsession with this lady who's the the niece or i think yeah the niece of the 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 gentleman whose funeral whose funeral it is who is in a relationship with alan tudyk's character who i love in this movie and for me is the absolute saving grace of this this film um and and he's just like she's obviously in the middle of stuff and he's just like so martha like you know what's going on and she's like doesn't even acknowledge him just completely walks past which is the best response that that like that type of thing could could possibly deserve uh, and it's anyway there's just so many dislikable characters in this film and it really frustrates me i'm glad i rewatched it because peter dinklage is fantastic in this um alan tudyk is just outstanding like yeah i and the the i think it's the brother of martha who is um, the, 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 the lady that's uh, in a relationship with Alan Tudyk, his character is also great. Love the actor. He's brilliant in, um, oh goodness, the film that I'm thinking of with Kira Knightley. Atonement. Domino. No. Uh, uh, it's like like love, love, Love Actually, or is it Love Actually? Kira Knightley's in Love Actually, isn't she? She is in Love Actually. Yeah. He's like, he, he's like a waiter or something or his friends are away and he's like i'm going to america because american women love the oh, British accent. that, guy, yeah, yeah, that yeah. guy so that's the same actor uh, as 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 this dude love he's very funny um yeah alan tudyk is just like high as balls he's like so high uh and not intentionally and he just does a wonderful job his performance is really really stellar um uh, and peter dinklage as well just just really really good him him popping up out of the coffin with like those contacts on <laughs> his pupils like dilated to like the the the, the ultimate degree he's <laughs> he looks like a demon it's so so funny anyway i have mixed feelings about the film <laughs> i'm glad i rewatched it but i i did have to liberally use the skip button to get through it because i yeah sometimes british humor is just like that sometimes it's fantastic other times it's really painful and i just find it super cringe and difficult to sit through it makes me uncomfortable very interesting jason do you have any uh memories of of death at a funeral from your you know and here's the thing. it's probably because when i watched it i was young like too young to understand the jokes and what was going on with it um yeah i remember the one part where the, uh, I'm probably misremembering this. Some guys trying to reverse out of the driveway and people just keep coming in. Is that a thing in this film? Almost. Not quite, so, yeah. So in, in the parking scene that I was talking about, the dude who's trying to drop off Uncle Alfie drives down the driveway and just as he's about to park, like a caterer or something, decides that they're going to do a three-point turn. And instead of waiting for him to move past them so that they could come through, they just pull in front of him. And it's like, he's got nowhere to go but backwards that driver could have reversed backwards which is also incredibly frustrating um but yeah and so he has to reverse all the way back to get this caterer out and there's no parks so he's parked in the middle of butt freak nowhere yeah yeah that's that's with a, yeah with wheelchair you know um yeah ridden mm. cranky Uncle old man that, that keeps hitting him with a walking stick um oh. yeah so i remember and then i remember um like just feeling like i was confused when i was younger so mm. i uh, uh i'm sorry that i didn't get a chance to watch it this time sure. around i lament the fact that i did because i feel like this is one of those movies that going back to uh, as an adult with you know a better sense mm. of humor uh, or a wider array, uh, array of humor um it would it probably would have made me laugh a bit and appreciate the film a little bit more because yeah i feel i feel like this is probably one of those movies that i would like as an adult um but yeah um i know exactly what you mean uh, to help my to help me get up to speed uh, while i was making myself a hot chocolate um i watched uh, a few videos uh, a few clips from the from the film and i know exactly what you mean about that just that annoying self-centered character yeah um, yeah and i that would have bugged me as well but like 
yeah. yeah, I feel like um, as an audience, he was probably that character that everyone can pile onto. So yeah. that it makes the other characters not as like unbearable because I feel like the the majority of the uh, like actually everyone in the family has something going on, right? Um, yeah. Like there's that um, the brother who's the author. He's like yeah, complaining the successful about, brother. Yeah, he's complaining about you know uh, being in first class and it's like the thing about first class is you know even though yeah. you have your seats everyone can die and everyone's like uh, uh you know so yeah mm. those are like part of the clips and like again i have i have to admit like these were clips that i watched to help me get up to speed for tonight's episode for research um so i'm sorry i didn't get around to watching the movie but um yeah i guess that's i need to revisit this i feel like again there's one of those movies i feel like um again with like in bruges for example you guys talk about in bruges all the time and how much you love that film love uh, that I think film. when that film first came out i saw it i was like this looks boring and i didn't watch it and i still haven't seen it to this day so yeah, like that's the thing. It's like stuck in my head, like my initial reaction. I have that. Like, I have that as well. I remember it took me the longest time to watch Shutter Island because I thought it was a horror film because the trailer way back when, yeah. yep. painted it like a horror film. It looked yeah. horrifying. Yeah. yeah. So I just never watched it. And when the boys, you know, many years later, when we we're on the Awesome Addiction, say you need to watch Shutter Island, I'm like, oh no, 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 no <laughs> horror for shame. You have misunderstood yeah. me yeah. entirely. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. It is something I'll get around to. So, um, yeah. What are your thoughts, Shane? Uh, yeah. No, I'm. I'm pretty. I'm pretty positive on this one. Uh, I, I want to call out uh, the first moments of the film, and that is the opening credits, um, which is just like this really uh, quirky but very smartly constructed um, animated sequence of um, a uh, like a o- overhead sort of um, map view of this uh, coffin as if it was a vehicle like a g- driving over this map and you see like the dotted line as it's trying to get to its destination um, and there are just so many moments as the opening credits rolling where it's like doing a 270 degree turn around like a roundabout or no sorry more than two like a 540 degree turn around a roundabout because it doesn't know where it's going you immediately know that this is going to be a very quirky um classic british british comedy um and that first scene like the the hearse arrives with the coffin it's brought into the house they're greeted by the son of the deceased and he says please just you know make your way to, into the living room first door on your left um and uh yeah the the, the people from the uh, the funeral service are uh, so, oh, so would you like to you know see the body? Um, he they open it. This is in the first like three minutes of the film. Uh, they open it. He looks down. He's like, "Who's this?" <laughs> they're like, "I beg your pardon." <laughs> it's like, "This isn't my father." <laughs> and they're like, "Shit, we got the wrong coffin." <laughs> and they just like hurry it back out through the hearse and speed off. And they come back. And it's like terribly sorry, sir. Is this your father? <laughs> so. From the get-go, you know you're in for some very quirky British humour. Um, and, mm. yeah, I'll, I'll echo a lot of what Terry said. Alan Tudyk is on point in this film. Yeah. Uh, and then from the very beginning, you understand that he has uh, unknowingly taken some hallucin- hallucinogenic drugs. Uh, and from that from that moment, immediately in my head, I'm like, how is Alan Tudyk going to play this? I'm so mm. looking forward to seeing how he plays a character who is hallucinating. And he is hilarious. I love every single scene that he is in um yeah yeah, and then just some i what i liked most about this film is just the ridiculousness of this entire situation it just keeps escalating escalating it's like um everyone's like the hangover right where it's just like oh we got drunk at las vegas but all of a sudden there's mike tyson and a tiger and i've got a tattoo on my face or i've lost a tooth uh it's just out of control and this film keeps layering on the ridiculousness of the situation um as the film goes on and uh yeah it gets to the point where other characters are being introduced to the um like this this controversy and this secret that they're trying to hide that is also just ridiculous in and of itself um but if it gets out it's going to be you know um sort of a a really bad thing so they're just trying to avoid that at all costs and just the lengths to which they go to cover up this entire thing just adds to the absurdity of it all so i think that's that's how i could best describe it just the the absurd british humor really well at play here and um the 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 actors throughout play it really really well like that character that you really hate terry he plays it well, right? Like that actor does a fantastic job of being yes. incredibly dislikable. Um, and, and just gross. He's so he's so sweaty. And like, 
you, you look at him and you're like, that dude's moist. Like, there's no <laughs> way that that guy... Well, to be fair, he pushed like a 100 kilogram man, 100 kilogram even, man up even, like a pebble even pathway. Before, <laughs> even before that, I was like, this dude is, is he's like, he's a climbing hand individual. Um, I, yeah, anyway. He uh, did play it well. The actor played it very, very well. And there were moments where I was just like laughing out loud in my chair. Like when he has to rush mm. Uncle Alfie to the bathroom and like yeah. he he can't, he's, he's wheelchair bound, right? Like he can't get out of the chair himself. And he's the only person in the bathroom with Uncle Alfie. So I was like, you have to help me up. You have to help me up. It's touch and go. He's just gonna, he keeps saying, it's touch and go. It's touch and go as if he's about to shit himself. And yeah. Howard's just like, oh, okay. He's, like, he's holding him up and Uncle Alfie's like hugging him and he's like standing above. He's like, are you over? He's like, yes, I'm over. I'm over. He's like, you have to pull my pants. I was like, you pull my pants. It's like, I can't pull my pants down. He's like, quick, it's touch and go, it's touch and go. And it like pulls his pants down and then Uncle Alfie sits down before Howard can withdraw his hand. And then Howard's hand's like stuck in the toilet bowl as Alfie's relieving himself. And he's just horrified. He's got this shit all over his hand. And he's like doing so his rough. best to wash it off. And like the, the sink's filling up with water because the drain's not working. So it's just like this brown water that's filling up in the basin. Yeah. Oh, it turns it's, the tap on too hard. Yeah. It just sprays, and the the poo that's on his hand sprays and gets him in the face and in his mouth. It's it's, it's yeah, it's it's that. It's over the top. It just keeps oh, layering, 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 ridiculous. and I I just yeah. love the ridiculousness of it all. The ridiculousness of the solution that they come up to about getting out of this weird predicament that they're in. Um, I can yeah. I, I think I can recommend this film just because of the absurdity of it all, and I think that it's um yeah, it's British humor pushed to its it's nth degree like it doesn't get yeah. get much more ridiculous than this um and yeah it's full of those classic british uh, humor stereotypes just you know b bumbling characters that are never too sure of themselves and don't know what to do and are always you know just caught up in these ridiculous situations um as everyone in this is like hugh grant in notting hill essentially they're just like uh, just like nervous and, and bumbling so um i really i really like that sort of thing so this is something that really vibed with me i can recommend um yeah i remember speaking to you all and just like Watch the F word because I think there's a better chance you like the F word. I think there's a chance you'll like Death at a Funeral. So, if you're um, looking for something quirky to to watch, then uh, can recommend this one. Definitely give it a give it a watch soon. Yeah, I I would still recommend the film, even though elements of it great. It's like nails on a chalkboard kind of thing. I, the movie's still worth it. I forgot about the opening sequence. Even when I rewatched it, I was like, I'd forgotten about this opening sequence. I need to remember to mention that. And then I'm like sitting here laughing, trying not to laugh out loud as you're describing this opening sequence of the film. It's so funny. And it is classic British. It's like, and, and who's this? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's just so polite. Not, he... <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it is good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. TM Penguin, thanks for joining us. Hope you're well. Uh, you've reached us at the very end of the show, but fret not. You can watch this VOD on uh, our YouTube channel. That is Magic Cars, all one word, if you want to see our reviews of uh, Death at a Funeral and earlier. Um, oh. Pardon me. Uh, what do we? Uh, the F word as well. Um, anyway, uh, we're going to wrap up there. Death at a Funeral. It is on Stan, so feel free to uh, check it out there.